Hi there, it's Gabriel here, SEO Manager at Hike SEO, and in this video we'll be talking about the mobile friendly test. How to test your website for mobile friendliness. Alright, let's dive in. So in this video, you'll learn what is a mobile friendly test and why it's important for your SEO, why it's important to test your website for mobile friendliness. Um, we'll also be covering some best practices around how to make your website more mobile friendly. Um, and there will be also different types of tests that you can do, so we'll highlight a few that you can use. So what is a mobile friendly test? It's basically a tool to help you determine whether a website is optimized for mobile devices. And when I say mobile devices, it could be smartphones, uh, it could be tablets, it could be anything in between there. Um, and this ensures accessibility and user friendliness for smartphones and tablets. So here's an example of a mobile friendly test from Google. And you would put your URL in there, for example, hikeseo.co. And then it tells you if the page is usable on mobile and other any other details or hints. So why is mobile friendliness important, especially from an SEO point of view? Well, the first thing is mobile first indexing. So Google, since 2015, um, as well as other search engines, now primarily use mobile first indexing. And what this means is that when it visits a site, it visits it as a mobile device would uh, before it goes to the desktop version. Before 2015 and before that, um, it visited websites as if it was a desktop. Um, and that was before mobile devices became more and more predominant um, and used in society. So this means that they crawl and they index the mobile version of the website first. So it reviews the site as if uh, it was a smaller screen, looks at the different elements, how they move together, um, all of that. So if your site isn't mobile friendly, it may not rank as well in search results compared to those websites that are. Um, improved user experience. This is a big one that Google always looks at. It's all about the user experience. And um, if it can provide a better user experience for visitors, especially on smartphones and tablets, then Google likes that and search engines will prioritize that website in the search results. Uh, so this can lead to lower bounce rates, longer time spent on your site, and increased engagement. So all really good ranking factors uh, that Google takes into account. Faster page loading. So mobile friendly sites are usually optimized for faster loading times because generally speaking, um, and this is more of a general statement, sometimes when you're on a mobile network, it might be a lot slower than a typical internet connection. And that's why the loading speed is even more important so that it doesn't take ages for a website to load. Um, so this makes uh, this this means making sure that the images are resized appropriately, for example, and many other things we'll cover. So page speed is a significant factor in SEO rankings. So it's important to look at that from um, the mobile perspective as well. And the facts prove it. Uh, so 74% of website users are inclined to revisit a site if it offers mobile friendly functionality. And that's from WebFX. Um, in 2022, mobile devices accounted for 55.79% of worldwide website traffic, according to Statista. Um, and also businesses with a mobile friendly uh, with mobile friendly stores uh, or e-commerce experience a 67% higher likelihood of customers making a purchase according to Forbes and 68% of companies that prioritized mobile first website development witnessed an increase in their sales according to SAG IPL. So the facts all point to the same thing is that we need to optimize our websites for a mobile first experience. So let's talk about some mobile friendly website best practices. Um, so the first one is website responsive layout design. 
And this is essential for mobile friendly best practices because it ensures that your website adapts seamlessly to various screen sizes and orientations. Sometimes you hold your phone in portrait mode, sometimes in landscape mode, um, same with your tablet and vice versa. And it provides users with a consistent and visually appealing experience across different devices. So they might switch from their smartphone to their tablet, from the tablet to their desktop or laptop, and back to their, their tablet, and then back to their mobile device. And they, they want a seamless experience across all of their devices. Optimize website speed. Um, so some mobile networks can be slow, like 3G. And there's areas where you might go where you just don't have that 4G or 5G speed anymore. And that's where it becomes even more important. So you need to optimize the performance of your site by reducing unnecessary scripts, leveraging browser caching, and making sure that the image size is small so that the images load quickly on a slow connection. So you can use Google's PageSpeed Insights tool to check your site for loading speed. Resize and compress images. So by default, images, when you use a camera or you download them from the web, tend to be quite high resolution and large file size, especially if they're the originals. So resizing and then compressing them strikes a balance between the visual quality and small file size. So remember, smaller file size equals faster loading because there's less data that the server has to transfer over to the end user in the browser. Avoid pop-ups. So pop-ups are highly disruptive, especially on mobile devices, and this causes inconvenience to users. I'm sure you've experienced it many times. You go to a website on your phone, you just want that piece of information, and boom, out comes a pop-up, distracts you, uh, it's annoying, you want to, you're want trying to find the, the X button to close it, it just causes a disruptive experience. So you want to minimize or entirely eliminate intrusive pop-ups to enhance the user engagement and reduce bounce rates. Sometimes when this happens, you just leave from the site altogether. Optimize buttons and interactive elements. Uh, so you want to ensure that the button, any buttons that you have on the site or other interactive elements on the web page uh, are appropriately sized for touch screens. So they might be fine on the desktop or laptop or even on the tablet, but when it comes to using your fingers uh, on the screen, they might be too small or they might be disproportionate or whatnot. So it makes navigation much easier and prevents accidental taps once these are optimized for a good size on mobile devices. Use appropriately sized fonts. So choose fonts that are legible on small screens and then adjust the font sizes to maintain readability on smaller screens. So the font, uh, sh the font size should adjust depending on what device or screen size that you're reading on. So it maintains readability. Um, you don't have to squint at it. You don't have to zoom in or any of that. So avoid using text that requires users to pinch and zoom. I mean, that is um, from an age long gone when we had to do that. Most sites now automatically um, are responsive to the size and the, the text changes size and flows around. Um, so it should autom automatically flow, resize, and fit tablet and mobile screen sizes. So avoid large blocks of text. This makes reading difficult and hard to skim through. Um, typically, people are busy and on the go when they're using their mobile devices and they need quick answers. So having all this huge chunks of text can be a bit um, hard to read or skim through. So break up the content into smaller digestible chunks so people can just skim through it, see the headlines, get the information quickly, bullet points, whatever it is. Um, and use concise paragraphs. So if you can say um, more with less words, do that. Um, space out links. So this is important if you have lots of like internal links or links on your page. Make sure to increase the spacing between these links 
to prevent users from tapping the wrong one by mistake, especially if there's two links overlapping like on one on each line and the line is like really close together. Um, then you want to make sure that you know there's enough room so when you tap, you don't accidentally tap the wrong one. And this improves the overall user experiences um, and also reduces frustration if someone taps the wrong link. Simplify calls to action. So make calls to action or CTAs for short, uh, really straightforward and easily accessible. So you don't want like two or three different directions or like saying, click here. Oh no, click here. No, make it simple. Make it one direction. Um, say one call to action. This is what you want to do. Um, so users should immediately understand what action to take without any confusion. There should be no choice to make for them. They should just have that one choice, click, and then next step. So having too many mixed call to actions can confuse users, especially on mobile devices with small screens. Uh, it's easy to get lost um, with that journey. Optimize navigation and menus. So simplify the site navigation and menus for mobile users. Uh, you can use intuitive icons, concise menu items, like shorten them if they're too long. And this helps users find out what they need effortlessly without looking around. Um, avoid having more than one level of submenu on mobile devices. And this can reduce the number of taps that they need uh, to find the page that they're looking for. Um, oftentimes the mobile menu um, is kind of in the corner top right with three little uh, bars and you tap on that and the mobile menu comes down and then you can scroll through that. Test on multiple devices. So regularly test the website on various mobile devices and browsers to ensure consistent functionality and appearance. Just um, developing a site on one page or one one device and looking at it there doesn't ensure that it will work on other devices or look good on other screen sizes. So it's important to test on different configurations to make sure it works. And this will address any issues that might arise on specific platforms. So you can use a tool like Browser Stack, just search it in Google, and this is a great resource uh, to help you test especially if you lack um, the hardware, if you, if you don't actually have physical devices to test it on, it's a virtual version to test your website on. Optimize forms. So streamline forms, if you have any, uh, for mobile users by reducing the number of required fields. Look, the more fields that you have, the less likely people will go through to the end and submit it. It's just too much information. So the less information you require, the more users will be able and willing to go through that process. So use mobile friendly input methods like date pickers, uh, make it one field at a time. Um, these kind of strategies really help increasing the conversion rates um, and also encourages user engagement. So the primary tool for mobile friendly tests is the Google's mo mobile friendly test. You can just search it and you put your URL in there to test and it will tell you if it's mobile friendly or if not, what to improve or what the issues are. Now there's other tools you can also look at. So bing.com slash webmaster slash tools slash mobile friendliness. So this is Bing's version. Uh, you have browserstack.com slash responsive. You got ready.mobi, uh, you got webpagetest.org, and you got sitechecker.pro slash mobile friendly test. All of these are great resources that you can check out for your mobile friendly testing. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about mobile friendly testing, do let me know. Um, you can always reach out to the Hike support team, support at hikeseo.co. And if you haven't yet tried Hike SEO, it's a fantastic platform. It's an all-in-one SEO platform for beginners, for small business owner, owners, and for agencies who serve small businesses um, to help improve the overall search engine optimization, organic traffic, and all of that. All right, so check it out, and I will see you there. Take care.